I'm not going on the internet. I have to use my phone or I would be all over the place, ladies. So I'm happy to be here and I'm at Chess Creek Nopatee, so it's fun to see some old faces. I'm going to start our time together in the book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 33. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those standing near heard this. They said, Listen, he's calling Elisha. In verse 37, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. No matter how people treat you, if you're God's child, you're being loved right now by an ever-present, ever-loving Redeemer. It is incredibly encouraging to think about as we make our way through a world that is marked by so many forms of relational sin and brokenness. It is something that we all need to be reminded of in those moments when someone has sinned against you in some way. Jesus was willing to be despised. He was willing to face rejection. He was willing to subject himself to hatred and violence. He was even willing Why was he willing to do this? He did it so that we, as his children, would be able to live in hope and peace of knowing that no matter what we face in this human community, we are perfectly and eternally loved by him. He endured rejection so that we would know God's accepting love forever and ever and ever. How amazing is that? The grace of God, the love that God has lavished on us. So how will we respond? How will I live now? Because of what Jesus did. You know the bracelets, what would Jesus do? I want to make one that's like, what did Jesus do? What did he do? What do we do with that? Eleven years ago, my husband and I were in seminary. Let me clarify, I was not in seminary. He was in seminary, and he had three more classes to complete before graduating, and it was in the summer, August 28th. I know the day, not because I'm crazy, although I am crazy. <laughs> August 28th is a dear friend's birthday, so that's why I know the date. And when I tell you the story, you're going to be like, Anyway, it was a Sunday, and I had, we had a six-month-old, Isabella, and he left me at church that day, abandoned me and Bella, and went to Georgia with one of my very good friends, and we were in seminary. She worked there. Anyway, short version of the story is I cried out to God to restore my home chose forgiveness, and God redeemed and restored. Two weeks after he left, I found out I was pregnant with our second child. And you would not imagine that he would be there for the birth of Cassidy, but he was. And God restored. And two years later, we had our son Nathan. So we have an Isabella, Cassidy, Nathan, who I love with all my heart. 
Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Verse 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And my friends, I wish I could stand here today and tell you that after 18 years of pouring into this man, that I am happily married. But he did leave again. This past August 28th, we got home from church, me and my three precious children, and Daddy was gone. And I am in one month divorced. Divorce, it should really be called disgusting divorce, because it is is the worst thing I have ever walked through in my life. But I'm here to tell you that those three babies, they are my crown. journey, I can remember sitting in my chair, crying out to God on behalf of my children, how in the world, God, how do I do this alone? And yet I know I'm not alone, but you understand, when you feel alone, we have all felt alone. Maybe you're married and you feel alone. I was there too. And I was sitting in my chair, and Jesus said, lives inside of you. That is power, my friends. That is strength. The power of the Holy Spirit. He says, I have given you everything you need for life and godliness. You are the chosen steward of those precious little hearts. But you are not the owner. Remember that I am your redeemer. I will bring peace to your home and joy to your heart. So press on. Keep being that crazy boundary mama that you are, full of joy and grace. Luke 12, 32, he gave me that day. Do not be afraid. Fear not. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I have no excuse now. The Spirit of God is inside of me, and I've known him my whole life, and how is it now? For such a time as this, right, that he whispers that to me. Oh. So I have no excuse but to live my life every day to the glory of God. First Chronicles 16.11 Look to the <coughs> Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. God's will for us, you know what his word says, is to be Colossians 3, 16, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and to be thankful. Verse 17, and whatever you do, whether it is in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So I can tell you, my friends, I don't stand here today as a victim of divorce. And we all have a different story. And we are all broken in some way. But we do not have to live as a victim. When I look around, my life is pretty incredible. And I am blessed. And I am not journeying this alone. God has given me dear friends. <laughs> and an amazing mom. To walk this journey. And yes, I am sad, and there are still days that I'm so depressed, and it's dark. And I look at the last six months of my life, and I'm like, for real? 
because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fails. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. I wrote that scripture on my mirror at the beginning of this journey. And Bella, she's 12. So in August, she started middle school, puberty, and her parents were going through a divorce. What? That's a lot for a 12-year-old. And she came in my bathroom this one night. I didn't have to ask her what was wrong. I just held her and so gently turned her face to the mirror to show her. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Your mercies are me. It's okay, baby. God gave us emotions for a reason. I'm learning that right now. It's like, woo! I'm so emotional. <laughs> He read us a book. He hates reading, actually. My mom really gets that job. <laughs> Go to the room. Oh, but she loves it, and I'm grateful. If she doesn't, she's not telling me the truth. <laughs> Nathan read a book about a missionary, Gladys. And I will confess, I'm one of the moms who takes my children's binder from school, and I take all of the papers out, and they go right into the trash. 
Okay. You know? <laughs> because my house would be, I mean, it's already a mess. It would be so much more junked up from all these papers. Well, by the grace of God, this one day, when I pull the papers out, I don't do it with their artwork. Just like, it's like math worksheets. Like, who wants that? I don't know. I don't want that. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> anyway, I pulled this out, and it was, they had to write about someone in their life who has faith like Gladys, this missionary. And Nathan, in his sweet, messy handwriting, said, My mom has faith like Gladys. She reads the Bible every morning. And she's holding up our four walls in divorce. The four walls thing, that's Dave Ramsey. I always say that to my children. <laughs> but what did my boy see again? God is loving me through my children. His word. Cassidy, we can't leave her out. Last weekend, was Nathan had a doubleheader baseball, and it was freezing outside, and so I ran through Dunkin' I didn't mind. I drove through Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm driving through Dunkin' Donuts, and I get two coffees, and Cassidy said, Mommy, why do you buy two coffees? My children want three coffee. That's for Daddy, Cassidy. Mommy, Cassidy's in this, you know, there's seven phases to grieving. Divorce is death, my friends. And she's angry. And she was like, Mommy, why would you buy <coughs> Daddy a coffee? That's what I said to her. <laughs> and in God's grace, I said, Cassidy, do the point to others as you would have them do it to you. Because that's what the word says. Mommy, you're like the kindest woman I know. <laughs> Another God hug. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And when I shared with Cassidy that I was going to share that tonight, she said, Well, Mommy, you can't leave out what I told you the other day. <laughs> and I was like, what did you tell me? Mommy, actually, I need to read it because I forget. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Mommy, you are out of this world. I was like, thanks, Cassidy. No, Mommy, literally, the world is here and you're over here. <laughs> Jesus to do good works, 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. All of our imperfections and brokenness, they are to point us to Jesus. They were not a mistake. We were God's poem. We were created by God for God's purpose. And Lord willing, in April, I will be turning 40. I never imagined at 40 it seems so old. It's totally not old. <laughs> not old. No, don't ever say that again. I can't stand here and tell you that I imagined at 40 I would be a single mom. But I'm going to choose blessings and gratitude, not bitterness. We can remember that our emotions are not always our reality, ladies. They feel like it, but they're not. The truth of the Word of God is our reality. This is reality. Psalm 13, 5 and 6, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation, and I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. God has sovereignly allowed this brokenness, your brokenness. There is hope. We have hope. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 19, the law of the Lord, it's perfect, refreshing the soul. In those days when I was just crying, you know what restored my soul? The truth. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. What do you do when someone abandons you and all trust is broken? You go to the Lord because it's trustworthy. Making wise the simple. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Joy to the heart. Recently, I was at a, a show in Atlanta. I'm an interior designer, and I went to the show, and this stranger came up to me and said, Can I hug you? It sounds weird. It wasn't weird. <laughs> he said, You're the happiest person I've ever met. <laughs> And I'm walking through the words of did not say that. <laughs> but I'm just thinking to God be the glory, the joy. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Oh, great is your faithfulness, oh God. I'm going to close my time and ask you guys to close your eyes. And God gave me this for each of you, and I want you to hear it. From him. Every last word is from him. For your soul. The only one who really knows us, do you know what he says about you? That you're amazing. You're not only amazing, you are enough. I have created you just the way I want you to be. You are chosen. Oh, my precious daughter, you are beautiful. You are priceless. You are mine. Oh, you are adored. You are precious, honored, and valued in my sight. I see you. I hear you. And oh, how I love you. It is finished. By my wounds, you are healed. Nobody else has your story, my precious one. On purpose. Because I uniquely created in your mother's womb and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
You are an extraordinary soul. Fear not, fuck. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. You see, I am doing a new thing. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. I am your rock. I am your strength. I am your redeemer. I am your friend. I am the great I am. I am the lover of your soul. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. My friends knew we love because Jesus first loved us. And if you are here tonight and you are a mom that is Jesus, and it's in your holy, in your powerful, in your almighty name that we pray. Amen.